Hello, good evening, Hari Om. Welcome everyone to a very special evening of a discussion and a question and answer session between Janki Ji and Kunika. Uh, we would have this uh, conversation starting in a couple of minutes. The program for this evening is that Kunika would uh, be interviewing Janki Ji and have a discussion around the plans for the upcoming university. We're looking forward to that conversation. Followed by that, the conversation would be for around 40 minutes. Followed by that, we would have a live Q&A. So everyone can keep their questions in mind and um, post the discussion. Uh, we would share how the questions would be addressed. After that, there is a very interesting presentation on crowdfunding that would be led by Surender. Uh, so uh, let me just introduce our two speakers uh, and panelists for today. Uh, Janki Ji has been a resource and a scholar on the subject of Vedanta for the past 30 years, in three decades. Her service to the cause takes multiple forms, uh, from weekly online lectures that many of us attend, to public discourses, corporate programs in India and abroad. She's also the managing trustee of Vedanta Wisdom Trust, uh, which is looking to now start <laughs> the very unique Vedanta Wisdom University, and we'll hear more about it during the conversation. Leading the conversation with Janki Ji is uh, Kunika Sadhan. She's a multifaceted media personality who's used her media presence and influence to make real change on the ground. Uh, she has acted in more than 115 films. She's produced three original albums, held multiple state shows, and on top of that is also a producer of movie in multiple languages. And not only that, uh, she's been uh, making real change on the ground through a support for social causes, whether it be the awareness of AIDS, which goes back to right from the time from 1989, one of the pioneers in the space, to working for underprivileged children. And more recently, uh, she's also used her understanding of law uh, to make real inroads into informing everyone about the RTI or the Right of Information Act. And now leave it to Kunika to start this discussion with Jankiji. Thank you. Thank you. And Hari Om to all of you, and especially to you, Jankiji, my teacher. And this is um, a form of Guru Dakshana that I can offer you because of the wonderful knowledge that you gave me when I attended your courses. And I know the dream that you have for the for the university. And I really, really feel that, you know, it's you are going to achieve it because you're so dedicated, you're so committed, and you have a team that is equally committed and dedicated to the whole cause. So I'm going to just dive straight into the questions, Janti, so we don't waste time because I know you have elaborate answers for each of my questions. Um, first thing, Janti, I want to know, what is the relevance or the, rather the importance of Vedanta studies in today's times? Actually, you're muted. Sorry. Vedanta studies are something that is relevant at all times. There's nothing specific about this times. Um, as human beings, the most fundamental knowledge we require is the knowledge of life. Because if we don't know the facts, we don't know the truths of life, we will make any amount of mistakes. It's like not having a correct correct map of something and then you know you just go all awry so the reason you study Vedanta is you have a map of life you understand the basic principles and once you've understood that now you're free to do whatever you want but you're always free to do whatever you want but if you do it without the fundamental understanding of principles you just land yourself in places you don't really wish to be so, so that is the relevance at all times, not now. Today, it's become particularly relevant because the options have become so much. The world has developed so much that if you don't know how to make your way through it, at every stage, there is something that can knock you down. Every step you start using your phone, that will knock you down. You start going to a job, that knocks you down. You, know, you get married, that knocks you completely down. So every stage, there is something to knock us down. So this knowledge keeps us not only straight, but progressing to wherever we want to reach. 
So what I'm understanding is what you're saying is because of all the stresses that we deal with every day, the competitive world that we are in today, um, the manipulations which uh, which are a lot of times hidden in people, which we can't see. Uh, something tells us something is not correct, but we can't see what it actually is. So empowered with the knowledge of Vedanta or Veda, Veda studies, Vedic studies, you say that you can na- navigate your life in the knowledge, with the knowledge, and you know how to deal with it. Okay. So that is why it's important. As you said, it's important in every time, not only in today's time. It it was it, it was in I mean it started whenever it was when it began the Satyuk time when it was written and then when it was uh, uh, preached and then it fo- followed on. It has got lost somewhere in Kalyu, which is what you're saying also. And am I right? That's that's what, what Yeah, I mean it is not so much in our memory anymore, in our collective memory. We have these little strands here and there which we put together in some kind of superstitious way and then we say no no is sab me kuch rakha nahi hai. okay so that now i want to ask you so why do we need a university specifically for veda why can't like we teach the quran the bible the gita at home why can't we, we why can't it be inculcated in in the studies at home or why can't it be why do we need a specific university for vedanta studies it can be part of a curriculum in another university why do you say that a specific Vedanta university is necessary? Ah, so is that a yeah. tough question? <laughs> oh, very tough because it will take me one more hour to talk on that itself. <laughs> <laughs> so why do we need it? Firstly, why do you need a specific uh, university? Why not have it in all the other colleges and schools? Now if somebody wants to be a doctor, he cannot join Vedanta university. He will have to go and do his MBBS. So what's the point of having it here? You should have it there because the doctor needs it, the advocate needs it, you know. So have it in all these places. Now, that's the purpose of having the university. We would like this knowledge, obviously, to be taught in homes, to be taught in schools, to be taught in colleges, in other universities. The biggest question is, where are the teachers? How do you start all these departments over there unless you have teachers? To which you can respond and say, no, but there are people who know this knowledge in society. Of course there are. But how is the layman supposed to decide whether this person knows or doesn't know? So what the university will do is it will give degrees. So now just as you have a degree that tells us that you are a lawyer, Otherwise, how am I supposed to decide whether you can be a lawyer or not? I don't have the wherewithal to decide that. Similarly, people don't have the wherewithal to tell who knows the subject, who doesn't know the subject. So then they go to random people. And of course, they get random results. Some people go to very good people and they do very well with the knowledge. Some people go to not so good people. And then you know the result of that and gives the whole subject a bad name. So once we are able to teach this knowledge in a traditional way and give degrees, even those who have currently studied in so many ashrams all over the place, if we can even give them a degree, you know, just do something by which they do a little bit and we can give them a degree, we'll be doing society a great favor because only competent people will be allowed to do this. Today, we will not go to any doctor. Now we want to see his MBBS degree. Then why does that not happen in spiritual life? Why do we not see his degree over there telling us that he has done enough work to be able to now teach me? When I go to a spiritual master, that person is telling me about how I should run my life. For a person who's telling me how I should run my health, there's a degree. But my whole life, any random person can tell me. I can get up today and start talking. Who is to say that I am fit to do this? So once we give the degrees, this will be a great service to society because we will know who is competent to teach this in the right manner. You know, just like every other subject. Now, uh, once we have accomplished this, okay, then all the other schools and colleges, you know, people will, it will be on an academic platform. And so, Everybody is going to benefit out of this. And also there's a very unfair thing in this. In the ashrams as they exist today, 
okay, in Vedanta Academy, wherever, any in place which teaches this knowledge and teaches it very well. Students stay there for 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, studying this knowledge, researching this knowledge. And if they come out into society, there is nothing to tell that they know anything more than somebody who read two books and started teaching. You know? Mm -hmm. This is a disservice to society because society suffers out of it. It's also a disservice to all those people who worked very hard. And to the knowledge of Veda, Vedanta. To the knowledge yes. of Vedanta too. And, and with what discipline? Because Vedanta is not just, you know, you study a book and you go to the canteen. It's not like that. It's like from morning, 4 o'clock to 9 o'clock. You have a regimented day. And you do that for 10, 20 years. These are people who are stalwarts. But there is no way anyone can tell they are. So we but need it's to a little, uh, It's a little tough to expect the youth to be studying for 10 to 20 years. I mean, what age do they start and when do they finish? And then, you know, um, my next next question is that what will the student achieve or attain from this course, especially, first of all, my question is, there's one question A is that how long is that course supposed to be? And what you said that you'll have a structured system of learning, it will not be 10 to 20 years like normally it is in, in the institution. So this, this, my first question is that what will the student achieve or attain? And nowadays we see universities selling these packages, you know. When you come out of this university, you get this package of this much money, this and, you know, the perks. And people talk about packages, students, parents, when you talk to them, oh, my son is studying this so-and-so engineering college. When he comes out, he's going to get this package. And it's a little, you know, it's a little discomforting because uh, maybe because I'm a creative person. And so I feel that how you, we have put our children into these packages, you know, oh, ek crore rupees saal ka milega, ne to char crore milega. So what is, how is Vedanta, what are the student who studies Vedanta, um, what is he going to attain? What is he going to tell his parents that this is the package I'm going to get? Okay. So that's question B. <laughs> you want me to repeat the question? Yes. Question A is how, is it a structured course, right? That, that's your first question. Yes, it is a normal structured course because it will be under the UGC guidelines. So just as you get a graduation of three years or four years with honors and then you have a postgraduate and all this is and the PhD, you know, it's, it's the same. It's the same academic platform as any other education in our country. It, it will come under the NEP and the new education policy. In fact, there's some great support for the new education policy which talks so much about putting values into this thing, but has, where, where are the teachers? As I keep saying, where are these teachers who are supposed to do all this? Now you can't catch hold of people, give them six month courses and say, go and teach values. It doesn't work like that. There's, or nobody wants people's lectures on values like that. So how is it structured? Exactly the same as everybody else, except that this is much more discipline involved. It will be a three year, four year course, graduation, post-graduation, two years, and then of course, PhD, same. Now about your second point, what will these students do after the course? What is the packages they get? Okay, so that brings me to another reason why we need to set up this university. Today, education has become just how much money will I make? Saraswati is not subservient to Lakshmi. This is wrong. You don't study for how much my package is going to be. Education for education's sake. When you study for how much my package is going to be, for how much I'm going to earn, eventually, you know, these people who studied like that, they brought the economy of America down. You know, all, all their scams finally ended with the, the world going into depression because all they can see is how much money am I making? That's all they can see. The result of that is climate is what it is. Poverty is what it is. <laughs> all the chaos that we are creating in our life is because we are teaching the students, you are studying to make money. We're teaching them that. And that is asking for trouble because see, see the trouble that's generated. You know, like you make a drink. That drink will, you, you sell that drink so well all over, the, all over the world you sell it. It's the number one drink of the world. But it's the worst thing for a human being to drink. 
India also we had drinks, but they're all good for you. See, everything they come up with is something bad for you. It will damage you. They make a dish and they have this all over the world. But you eat that dish and you're damaged. Like, you're not, because the only point is how much money did you make? Right? So we want to go against that. The reason we want to go against that is that in this country, even though we are educating children only for employment, I don't know if you have, if you have in the recent times tried to employ somebody. It is so bad, nobody is employable. You're educating them for employment and they're not employable. So that's the second problem. If they are employment, they create chaos. And secondly, that others are simply not employable. And thirdly, even if these guys do very well in business or whatever it is they take up, just making money cannot be enough in life, right? You have to know how to handle relationships. You have to know how to handle the money you have made. You have mm. to know all these things in life. How to, how to use the money you're making. <laughs> yes. How do you handle your health? Every one of us have got blood pressure, cholesterol, and we don't think what should I teach my child so that he doesn't get it or she doesn't get it? We need an education system that will prepare us for life. Not one which will prepare us for a living. So that is what this university is trying to do. Make it for life. In every aspect of your life. Now, if you say, no, I don't agree with you. I will only teach my child uh, about employment then please know that even though you may teach your child for employment today, maybe he is employable and very highly employable. 10 years later, you do not know if that field will exist. So what are you doing? Which way is this proving right? In every way, it's wrong. And therefore, it's the need of the hour to have universities like this. We would like to set up the first one so that we can show it can be done. And then hopefully everybody else will also think of doing things like this. So I, I get what you're saying because, you know, um, all the stresses, all the, it all comes with this. It, it, like, we are, as I said, we're, we're trying, we're educating our children for a package. And sometimes when they can't achieve that package after being educated or after, you know, scoring marks, they don't get, because there are only that many jobs in the market. And the person, everybody doesn't get that the best job. And then they go through stress and then they are like, oh, I've, you know, I've disappointed my parents. How am I going to run my home? How, what kind of marriage am I going to have? Who's going to marry me? You know, things like that. All those things add to stress. So if you, if you give them a backbone of Vedic studies or Vedanta studies, um, it gives them the courage to deal with all this and make them stronger human beings. But my it's not only courage, also clarity of thought. Yes. You know, you must be able to think your way out of the problems, right? Like they say, Akal badi ki bhaes. you have to think your way out of it. You can't just say, I am going to be courageous. I'm not going to lose hope. You can't do all this. You have to yeah. figure out how to deal with it. So that's what we want to do. We want to and you don't not sorry, job sorry. seekers, but job givers. Why should we all be seeking jobs? Why don't we give jobs? Why don't we why are we not? Aiming to be employers rather than employees. The, the government also encourages people to start their own businesses and all, and they, that's what they're trying to push at. And definitely, this is uh, something that you know uh, the government should seriously look at because if and I know that you are endeavoring to do this and um, you know, the land and you know there's a lot of things. The universities are not set up like that. I know the the journey that you all are taking. Uh, I mean, I was there in the beginning, so I know how difficult it is to get land, to get the money, then to you know set up. But what I also want to ask you, Jankiji, of course, and um, when students, as I said, when they feel that they fail, the next thing they think of suicide. Today, you're seeing so many people committing suicide, so many people getting heart attacks. So I think what you are trying to say here is that when you are empowered with this knowledge, you know how to deal with these ups and downs. You don't just fall flat on your face and say, "Ab mujhse kuch nahi hoga." Um, I'm a failure now. That That is what you are uh, saying. Um, but uh, if, it's such, if it's going to be such an important thing to solve all the dilemmas of the world, I mean, like, you know, the, the, all the, the sorrows and whatever we deal with, the stresses, 
how about just a hand few a handful of people uh, being educated because after all there have to be people the candidates have to choose that i want to be a teacher because initially i want to start with teaching students who really want to be teachers so that then it can spread they can spread the word not really because hmm. um, it's not necessary that everybody who joins the university will become a teacher there's no such need the work we choose should be in accordance to our swadharma swadharma means our nature some are by nature teachers and some by nature may be artists or maybe entrepreneurs or i don't know whatever it is you know <laughs> the kids have so much potential nowadays and there's so many different things they could possibly try out so uh, there's not everybody is not going to become a teacher but everybody will become somebody that will influence other people which we are seeing even in class at the moment we have online classes we are finding that the people are benefiting not just themselves how many marriages have be- have been saved by vedanta simple example Uh, one of our students started a um, NGO. She didn't actually start the NGO, but she started working. She didn't start an organization. She started working, and she it was in the COVID time and all of that. She thought, how will the poor students in the villages study now? So she started. She coordinated. She got teachers from all over the world to give them tuitions online. She gave them phones. She created electricity because these guys had to have all this stuff. she now has 6 700 students i believe under her i mean you know in this whole thing so how will a few people influence you can see right now even with a weekly class people are doing that one person told me that he had this unfortunate task of having to fire 40 people from his organization they were a del- they are a delivery service and he's one of the managers there and he was in charge of those drivers and he had to they were downsizing so he had to fire 40 of them but he knew that what the state those people were were in what loans they had and all that so he took the trouble of calling up all his colleagues in the industry and tried to have these people put somewhere you know so even forget what great things the university students will do people who are doing one one hour a week are 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 influencing so many others it the, the geometric uh, effect of this knowledge is something amazing one person in class told us that he met somebody in the park and that fellow was having some trouble at home with his wife or whatever so he was just sitting and talking to him in the park and then whatever he told him that fellow's marriage was okay now just wow. think about <laughs> this some one conversation somebody had in the park that man's marriage was benefited that means when that wife goes to her office and she's less irritated with life all the people there are also you know not irritated you know she's not doing anything yes yes it. affected yeah so just imagine the benefit it is given it's amazing uh, you know the moment the the human mind expands the potential is something phenomenal you just stand aghast and say you know with so little humans are doing so much if we could put this knowledge really into action uh, you know the, i don't know what the result will be there you know, i think I'm sure the the character of the nation will develop better. I mean, because of at the moment humanity. we see, yes, of all humanity. But first of all, the nation, because we see that nowadays people are cheating or lying, and with the drop of a hat, they don't think, and they don't even feel any remorse about it. So there's a certain amount of you know that that kind of um, development will happen, of course. And I agree that uh, I mean, in this limited students, the trickle down effect will be there, even when the whichever I mean, as many students join. Once the university started, but I have um, one, uh, you know, small question. I have two questions now. That last two question, but the the one thing I want to ask you. See, I please don't answer it if you feel it's it's not it's political or whatever. But we all know that every dharm sanstha, every dharm sanstha has got these mutt 
or these ashrams or these you know people sitting as the dharm ke guru or dharm ke thekedar ki ye hamara math hai aur hum ye sahi what do you feel will be their reaction or how do you think that they will stop you from because they'll say are ye kaun hoti hai certify karne wali ye kaun hoti hai university khodne wale this is the thing this is the problem which is why we you know people want to do good don't move ahead are you are you perceiving that something like this will happen with you or if it does what will how will you handle it i think i'm too small for them to worry about me <laughs> they won't be bothered they are so small <laughs> they are least bothered we are not interfering with their work right they are big they have money they have all this mathadish and what not on the other we are too tiny it is one small 25 acres they don't even count it as anything uh, <laughs> our work will speak for itself <laughs> no compet- i don't think they will see us as competition they haven't so far I mean, nobody has come to us and stopped us. Most people have killed us with their good words rather than any bad words. In the sense that we need work, we need effort. Just saying they're doing good work is not taking this cause forward, right? Mm-hmm. So um, we 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 get a lot of how great we are, but that's not. But you want to do a, more solid work with the university. So, so now I have a child. Say I have a child who's finishing his twelfth standard. Okay, I I want him to do Vedanta studies, and he also wants to. Obviously, nowadays you can't force children. What is at what age do you want them to join, or what? And then they pass out from that, and then do they do another course to qualify for their earning livelihood, or what? For earning their livelihood, or how do you structure it? Just a brief answer, a question on. I mean, uh, answer on that. Then I'll go to my last question. Okay. So it all depends on the nature of the child. We are not a mass thing. Okay. So it all depends on the nature of the child. If the child wants to do something like MBBS, or he wants law, or he wants a field of that nature, then he will have to do a short term course with us. But if his nature is is not so specific right suppose he wants to uh, start a business for instance then he can join us either for graduation or for post graduation whichever we are we will be an option for this bcom course i don't know what that course is doing and whether anyone bothers to learn anything in that course just for you know in india we want a thappa graduate hai so you do bcom and waste three precious years in the child's life because that child is doing nothing in that course you will ask me how do you know been there done that so i know exactly because we all behave like this. we all went through our graduation because our parents told us that you have to be a graduate you know because this is non negotiable in indian society so we somehow went through this thing so we just wasting the child's life but in that time if we teach them discipline we teach them clarity of thought we teach them how to work nobody in this country seems to know how to work it's it's an amazing thing our work ethic is so pathetic so we teach them how to work we teach them discipline we teach them clarity of thought and we mentor them in their own swadharma luckily we are all placed well placed in life i mean you know everybody in the class and all somebody is a maybe a, runs a business somebody is in ias whatever they are doing suppose you they want he wants to do ias then he'll be mentored in that suppose he wants to do a business then he can be mentored in that we're fortunate no our connections our, our strength is our people so whatever he wants to study we'll give one person to mentor him so that he can start doing it while studying if you want to do a business well start it while you're studying let the mentor be with you for those 3 years if it's graduation or 2 years that's a huge commitment by the mentor yeah that's... yeah and people are so good you know they're willing to do that even if they're willing for one year whatever they are willing for because we have enough people we can we can handle this and our, our bat sizes are small and uh, as far as what we are actually going to do first we are going to do the post graduation course first when we start we are going to start the two year post grad course so that we will have teachers to teach our own <laughs> in our own college university we will need right so if we teach post grad first then we have teachers for graduation but we won't start graduation very fast we'll do post grad we'll, we'll do this for 5 6 years so that 
these people have been studying, researching and all for at least five, six years before they start teaching, if they wish to teach graduates. So what you're saying is that people who come for five, six years for the course or who are studying five, six for post-graduation, two years, right? Two years. So they finish graduation and then they do two, two-year two course for post-graduation. Correct. And then they go to PhD, you know, if they want to be teachers. Uh -huh. So then those three years or two years of PhD were... So then how will they, uh, what is their livelihood? I mean, how will they support themselves? They'll be employees of the university if they wish to be. They'll go start their own if they wish. They can go to any, they can set up departments as a teacher, I mean. Okay, they can set mm -hmm. up departments in other places. They will be a rare commodity, right? Right in the mm -hmm. beginning, they, they can be a rare commodity. But um, you really don't even want to look at it like we would like, what we would like is the person's nature flowers out. And then the person themselves finds unique un or whatever most suits them. We don't want to tell anybody what to do. What we need is that people blossom in their own nature. You know, that's what the Gita talks about. In your own nature, you blossom. But knowing the laws of life, and you'll do amazing. You'll just do amazing for yourself, for others, for your family, for the country. You will do amazing. Varsha Kamath has said that NET and UGC give fellowship for uh, PhD. Thank you, Varsha, for that. Yes, I, I forgot that, that, you know, you get fellowship. So you get a kind of stipend when you're doing a PhD. So that will definitely help. Now, my last question, Janki Ji. I don't know. I think we have very little time for this last question, but I will still ask it. And I think it's a very relevant question because I have my own NGO. I've been running my NGO, working with children for the last 18 years, uh, working with the BMC education. I have another NGO where we empower women. The biggest thing is that people don't know whether their money, which is going into any NGO or into any kind of trust like this, like your, your Vedanta Wisdom Trust that you, are, you have, they don't know whether it's genuine, first of all. And secondly, what if the money that you've collected uh, is not enough and, you, and you're not able to buy the land with that money? Because I know the crowdfunding is now initially for the land. And then from there, of course, the government will also support for building a university. There are lots of ways that government can support. But for the land, right? The crowdfunding right now is for the land. What happens if you don't collect that money? Then what happens to the money you've collected? What are you going to do with that? Or how are you going to use it? Or what's going to be the state of that money? Uh, for the land, I don't know if that is so much of a problem. The entire cost of putting up the university, as we have projected so far, is 108 crores. So even if you come to 50 crores, you still haven't reached 108 crores, right? So it's not just about the two, three crores we need right now, but all the way to the end we have to reach. So I don't personally, if we're talking only of the land, I don't think that there will be a problem in terms of the point up to where we buy the land, because that is two, three crores. We already have half that money and hopefully in this uh, crowdfunding, we will get the rest of it. And, uh, but the journey is long. So what happens if the government doesn't give us university status? What happens? There's so many problems can come no, along the way. But we have a very, uh, what should I say? We have so many fallback plans which are possible. I hope we don't need them, but it's always possible. Let's say we only acquire the land and we can only build certain amount. Well, then this knowledge will be taught residential. Let us say that we have enough that we make for, a, uh, you know, a, an affiliation with another university. Well, then we can do that. There are so many steps in this journey that at every step we have done value addition. Even if we don't reach finally accreditation that we are going to need, you know, university and then accreditation, every step that we take is going to be beneficial. Even if we come to the point where we have some land, we run some courses and we affiliate with another university just to give the degree, even that will do. There's so many options in this. So basically what you're saying, the money will be there 
Always. And you have a lot of backup plans for the money. And so that people don't need to worry that, oh, if I'm going to contribute maybe five, 10, 15,000. So it's just going to be a drop in the ocean and it's going to be of no use. That is that because everything is going to matter and every drop is going to matter. Yes. And every and journey starts with a single step. Yes. yes. And we are going to make it because it is the need of the art. I mean, you know, if once understand that this is the greatest contribution we can make to humanity at the moment, why would you stop doing it? You just go as far. Either the university comes up or I die. One of these two things have to happen. No, 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 please. <laughs> you can keep working on it, right? I and can't then, hear my guru saying about talking about <laughs> death for heaven's sake. Please don't say that. <laughs> so but, then something, I mean, it's not one person, right? So, so many people believe in this. So it will continue. The truth will prevail. That's a law of life. Who will take it away? When the, our country was under, um, you know, all sorts of things, we were under foreign rule and this, that knowledge has continued. It will continue. The truth will always prevail. Yes, this is divine and what should I say, eternal knowledge actually. And not to take away from any religion because this does not speak of any specific religion. It is a way of life. Whether you are Hindu, Muslim, Sikh, Isai, Vedanta studies gives you the way of life. That's that's the beauty about this whole thing. Yes. Yeah. In fact, if you study Vedanta as a Christian, you'll become a better Christian. As a uh, Mohammedan, you'll be a better Muslim. As a Zoroastrian, you'll be a better Zoroastrian. As an atheist, you'll be a better atheist. You know, anything, you will just be better. And you can see that in class, right? You know, we have Muslims in the class. We have Christians in the class, we have Jews in the class, we have Parsis in the class, and we have every denomination of the Hindus in the class. Buddhists and Jains and like everybody. Yes, yes, I've seen that, yes. And it's a philosophy, it's a way of life, absolutely. So I think um, this was my last question. And uh, is there something you want to ask me or should we hand it over now to... I think Deepak is going to take over and uh, I, he has, uh, as per the program, we have live questions from the audience. So, Deepak ji, I think 10 minutes for the audience question, a little, a little too less, so you better start now because you're going to need more time. Thank you, Janki ji, it was lovely talking to you and, you know, I, you are hearing all the answers and uh, the, a lot of the answers of what I was thinking in my head, you know, from, from my point of view also. But I'm going to stay on the show, of course, muted and hear the rest of the program. Thank you, Thank you Kunika. Uh, would request everyone, whoever has questions, you can take a few minutes uh, to digest the conversation so far. I'm sure questions have come up. Uh, maybe everyone can take a few minutes if they want and uh, put your question in the chat. Uh, we've uh, muted everyone. So the way to ask the question would be to put it on the chat and I uh, would take it up with uh, Janki ji. Uh, while everyone's uh, thinking about the question, one question already came up uh, from Varsha. Uh, Janki ji, Varsha asks, uh, in a way, if the university has courses uh, only in Vedanta, how will the graduates be skilled to work in any other field? Uh, we since we that. are not, yeah. We would we did that because if you are in a very specific field that requires specific like uh, MBBS or law or something like that, then you'll have to study that and do short term courses with us. But if you are a more generalist, then Varsha herself is answering through mentoring, through um, you know doing it. Whatever you claim you're going to do after, if you think you're going to have a startup when you finish college, then do it now, no? If you think you're going to be an artist, then do it now. If you think you're going to write a book, then do it now. And do it while the course is on so that one learns while doing. Great. Surekha has asked a question. Um, what are the opportunities for senior citizen students in the university? She's put senior citizens in courts. So, um. Um, same with everybody else. We make no distinction on any basis. Senior citizens, age is no distinction. Gender is no distinction. No distinction of any sort. 
anybody can join the university following university norms, like whatever the university norms are, which are that your age doesn't matter. What matters is your degree. So if you have a degree, which is a graduation degree, then you can do post-graduation. If you don't have a postgrad, if you don't have a graduation degree, you'll have to get a graduation degree. So it, it's more on academic um, qualification rather than age or any other thing. But yes, everyone is welcome, senior citizens. In fact, today's life, it's, it's a very sad thing that people are retiring at the age of 60. Sometimes even earlier, even at 50. That's a very sad thing because life expectancy is tending to 100. So one expects that at 60, or 40, or I don't know what it will be in the coming generations, it will, people will require new careers and a new blossoming of their personality and doing something different. So yeah, they, I'm, I'm, I'm sure they will be at par with everybody else because they will be on the threshold of a new life and the youngsters are on the threshold of a new life. So all good. And very young, you know, 60-year-olds, 70-year-olds are very young nowadays. It's not like it used to be in olden times. There's a related question by Himanshu Bana. And he's saying, is there a plan to have an executive type program? Maybe a shorter time program. Yeah. Qualified it by saying for people in their 40s or 50s. Yes, definitely. We have all sorts of programs. They will range from one day visits there to full term courses. Currently also we are doing one month residential programs. We do all of that. We have, we have the whole gamut of it because different people have different degrees of desire for the subject, different um, time available at different periods in their life. So we are gonna do the entire gamut of it. Anybody who wants to study it, and is dedicated to it, we will do whatever we can to support that. And incidentally, we also need to do that uh, financially because uh, we want the, grad, the, the degree courses to be small batches. In which case, how do we keep the university self-sustaining? I'm telling you the, uh, this Himanshu because I know you're a finance person. So um, you keep it, self-sustaining because you you allow for this other things happening as well because we don't want to make it such that uh you know we have to increase the fee for the students so much that uh, it becomes prohibitive so we we'll do all this other stuff and we want to do it it's not just that we're doing it for that reason we'd like to we're doing it even now right so we'll do it then as well Thank you, Jankiji. There's a question from Bhargavi, uh, who's also uh, revealed the age, saying I'm 53, and asking what are the contents of the basic course? Uh, probably the question there is, are the contents of the basic course relevant for someone who's 53 years old? Yes, yes, Bhargavi, just as what we are studying online is relevant for everybody, the contents of the course will be so depending on which course you're doing, you'll study Vedanta, you'll study, you, you'll study the book Vedanta Treaties, you'll study Upanishads, you'll study Bhagavad Gita. You will study um, also what we call allied subjects. Because remember, we want to pe make people life ready. So allied subjects means how to take care of your health, how to take care of your finances. People make so much money, but they still find themselves poor. Everything about our life, we must know, right? We must know how to handle today's explosion in IT. So that also will be taught as part of the allied subjects. Sanskrit is a great thing in our country. That also will be taught. So we will study Vedanta and the Vedantic books. Plus we will have allied subjects uh, for us to understand different facets of our own life. So it's going to definitely be relevant for everybody. Whatever right. uh, There are a couple of questions about the location of the university, uh, Jankiji. Uh, Kamala Khan Dubey asks, is there a scope to set up 
such an institution in another state. Um, and uh, there is a question from Nilanjan. Uh, so his question is, does the university location help the students in any way? Could it be a place of public interest or a place that's more in the limelight, uh, more aligned to Vedanta? So questions related to the particular location of the university. Uh, what we are hoping is to make it somewhere not very far from Mumbai, but you know, land prices. So it, we are hoping that will be about a three hours drive from Mumbai. We choose Mumbai because most of the team is here. So it would make sense for us to do it here because we have the support here, you know, work-wise, volunteer-wise. However, we are not close to having, we are not absolutely closed to having it somewhere else. If anyone has any good ideas, please come share it with us. Tell us because getting the land is our first big problem. So if you have any better ideas or a better way, easier way of doing it, please tell us. This is a place where you not only ask me questions, but please provide some answers as well because this is, um, this is a joint endeavor, right? This is, this is a people's movement. We are doing this together. So if you have answers also, please give us, you have any better answers than what we have thought of so far, most happy to hear them. So where is the location? Currently, uh, we are looking at land of around three hours from Mumbai. Other locations are uh, open to it. And the location should have road, water, electricity. And Nilanjan, it's better for us to be in a quieter place so that people can focus on their studies uh, you know uh, and uh, incidentally because we are there that area will also develop wherever the uh, university comes the fact that it is there that area will develop so you know just by being there we can be of service so uh, we hope of course to make the university such that every aspect of it is of service like we build it with as close to zero carbon as possible. We, we give work to surrounding people. Um, we try to grow our own food, try to be self-sustaining, put up uh, solar and wind or whatever we can do. Or we'll only know once we have the land. But uh, every aspect of it should live up to its dignity and prestige of being with Antik. So it is all about the location. Thank you, Janki ji. Janki ji, a lot many more questions have come up. Try to combine a few of them in the interest of time. Uh, so there is a question from Mamita, and then there is a question that came from Romila from YouTube. And uh, the question relates to uh, Mamita asks, describe the ideal student of the university, where would we find them? And uh, uh, Romila's question is related saying, where will you get the uh, students from the university from? Uh, and then there is a follow-up question which has come from Omita and then uh, from a few other people talking about whether financial support will be provided to those who can't afford. Okay, so who is the ideal student? The ideal student is one who is service-oriented, who is, um, who is a free thinker, who can think for himself. And uh, if you have these two qualities, um, uh, I mean, we are more than blessed that you have chosen to come to us because that's the best kind of human. And um, as for where will the students come from? <laughs> the students are already there. Some students are telling me, why you not do hurrying up and getting it done? So I'm, this is such a great thing that, you know, we are looking for uh, maybe 20, 30 in the batch at max capacity. And we'll start with seven, eight, because the word also has to spread, right? So I don't see a problem that we don't have students. We have, we have, we have one or two students telling us right now, when I meet youngsters, they're so excited with this idea. They're wanting to join, <laughs> but we are very far away from doing anything for them right now. So yeah, I'm sure. And, and of course we are also working, right? The, uh, it, just because we are working to set up doesn't mean we are not doing anything else. All the classes are on, books are being published. 
you know, the, the entire setup is going on. So by the time we have it up, let us say in another three, four years, um, there'll be enough people ready. As of now, people want to join. Okay. Maybe we have time for one more question because we also have the crowdfunding presentation after this. Uh, it's a question from KN asking if there will be an entrance exam or a personal essay to see whether the student has the swadharma to join such a course so that the person is not joining just for the sake of getting a degree. Uh, sorry, I missed one thing on your previous question, which is about underprivileged. Uh, yes, under, if, if you cannot afford the fee, or yes, definitely we will look for sponsors and all. At the moment, we cannot afford your fee either. So we will definitely look for sponsors and we're all doing this together. So everybody who believes in this, I'm sure will we'll, we'll want to sponsor people who would study a course such as this. So yes, we will not stop a person from studying because he doesn't have the funds. We'll figure out some way at that time. Okay, so the, the KN's question is, uh, uh, what, what is our entrance exam? Uh, and uh, just joining for the sake of a degree, it's very unlikely somebody will join us for the sake of a degree. The, the nature of our course will weed out people. If you're not a free thinker, you will not, you will, you, you will say, oh my God, what will be my job prospect? If you ask that question, you're not fit for joining this academy, this university. So I don't think we need to do anything very uh, great in terms of uh, not taking people. I think we, by the nature of what we do, the right people just come to us. Or if they make a mistake, then they leave in a short while, which is currently also what is happening, right? In our classes, we are not stopping people from coming. It, they are free classes. Anybody can come. They come, they listen. If it's not their cup of tea, they can't stay. Nobody comes to us for the sake of a degree because it's not an IIT, right? Nobody will come to us for that. They will come to us because they have figured out that nobody else is going to be giving them this knowledge which will help them blossom and blossom many times as they're going to need in their life later on. Because, you know, you may start something, do it for 20 years, and then it's not necessary anymore. You should be able to do something else. You have to have the clarity to shift and change as the situation demands. So I don't see that problem, Ken. If it comes along, then yes, we'll have to do something about it. We'll take your advice of having an entrance exam. But we don't want to keep anyone out of this. If you can associate with these ideas, we really don't care what kind of person you are. We just need you to associate with these ideas. And uh, you will get the benefit of them. Thank you, Janki ji. Uh, we'll transition into the crowdfunding presentation, the unique concept of crowdfunding, our way to do service for this cause. There are a few questions here which were not answered. I'm going to capture them and we'll find a way to to answer them and get it to the people who asked these questions. Um, Surinder uh, would uh, request you to leave with the crowdfunding presentation. <laughs>